Hello everyone. I want to take this opportunity to finish up my discussion on uh, sourcing strategies and the make or buy decision and outsourcing. Previously, hopefully at this point I've convinced you that most companies from our program are outsourcing their commodity needs. Again, they got tons of suppliers to choose from. These suppliers have enormous amounts of competition and the end game is for any commodities that you have a ton of suppliers to choose from and all of them can do it better, faster, and cheaper than you can yourself. The sourcing strategy or the make or buy decision has been to outsource. So we've beaten that one to death and hopefully you understand that in general you outsource commodities. The next thing I want to talk about is we're at a point now that most of the companies that recruit from our program are pursuing very, very, very aggressive outsourcing strategies where it goes beyond just outsourcing commodities. Remember, at one time in American history, especially during the 1900s, American companies uh, in general were highly vertically integrated. What does it mean to be highly vertically integrated? It means they did everything themselves from beginning to end. They didn't outsource anything. Uh, the more mature industries like aerospace, steel, and automotive, those pre were predominated by very large companies that did everything themselves from beginning to end. I worked at General Motors at a time when it was highly vertically integrated. They didn't really outsource anything, they did everything themselves. And if they needed something, they didn't outsource it to a supplier. They would find a supplier and they would buy and own the supplier outright. Again. They thought it gave them a source of competitive advantage to be highly vertically integrated, that control having everything underneath one roof from beginning to end. Then they started to compete against companies that were outsourcing to suppliers that could do things better, faster, and cheaper. And companies like Ford, GM, IBM, Boeing, Harley-Davidson, John Deere, they were taking their resources and spreading them out too thinly and as a result of that they were kind of mediocre or subpar at almost everything because they weren't focusing on what they had to be really good at their core competency uh, so the end result has been over a period of time uh, non-american companies have come to america and they started competing against american companies this happened in the 70s 80s and 90s and american companies adjusted their sourcing strategies to basically come up with ways to widen their margins and increase their asset turnover rate in order to improve their ROI and become more competitive against these non-American companies. And the end result was they started to outsource all their commodity needs, which made sense. And then they got really, really aggressive and started to outsource what some people would say are their core critical strategic things. In other words, things that people thought were their core competencies, and yet they were outsourcing that. So let me give you a few examples. Uh, IBM in the 70s and 80s dominated and controlled the PC market. They did everything themselves from beginning to end. They sold a lot, they made a lot, their margins were phenomenal. There was no reason for them to do anything else, but they got really aggressive and they wanted to widen margins even more. They wanted to increase asset turnover rate, which means do more with less and pump up their ROI. So they went down this road of outsourcing all of their commodity needs, which made a lot of sense for PCs. For example, if you look at a PC, uh, a lot of that stuff is commodities, the plastic, the metal brackets, the fasteners, the nuts and bolts, the widgets, most of that stuff in that PC is a commodity. You got tons of suppliers to choose from. They compete like crazy against each other. So IBM just started outsourcing this stuff like crazy. And as a result of that, they had someone do stuff for them that they could do better, faster, and cheaper than IBM could themselves. And that freed up resources to reinvest in other things like their core competencies, things that they really, really needed to be good at that other people couldn't do and then gave them a competitive advantage. So IBM got to the point where they made a sourcing decision and a part of their sourcing strategy or lack thereof was to basically say, let's outsource everything we can that goes into a PC. So they met with a company and the company told them, look, we can design and build the brain of the computer. It's called the microprocessor. And IBM said, absolutely, this will help us widen margins and increase asset turnover rate and improve our ROI and make our stock go up in value. And let's have at it. Uh, the problem with that is when they outsource the brain of the computer, which some would argue is very core, critical, and strategic, they outsourced it to a small company at the time by the name of Intel. And when they did that, they didn't sit down with Intel and say, okay, moving forward, starting today, because we're your big, major customer, and we're going to help you, Intel, grow and be successful, 
We want to sit down with you and basically agree to joint ownership of all design and manufacturing capabilities so that you can ever take advantage of us and we maintain these capabilities ourselves, IBM, in-house uh, as you grow and prosper and flourish because of doing business with us. IBM never did that. They never thought about it long term, like 5, 10, 15 years down the road. What happens if we take this thing that we used to do ourselves and we outsource it to a company named Intel and over a period of time, could they really get really good at it and take advantage of us because we've lost those capabilities to do it ourselves? And they did, and they had to reload and reinvest and play catch up, and it cost them dearly, and it got to the point where IBM didn't make money on PCs. Likewise, uh, they met with some guy named Bill Gates, and Bill Gates said, look, I can give you like the software and the logic of the computer. It's called an operating system. I can do that for you. And Bill Gates walked into the meeting thinking, all right, I'm going to agree to this. I'm a startup. I'm working out of a garage, and IBM's going to make me sign something that basically says... I'm going to have joint ownership of all design capabilities and I'm going to have to basically establish a joint venture with IBM and partner up with them, form this strategic alliance. IBM cut them loose and said, nope, just do what you're going to do and we're not going to make you sign anything that says we have any ownership in the operating system. The end result was IBM got really aggressive, really greedy, was obsessed with widening margins and increasing asset turnover rate to pump ROI that they pursued an outsourcing strategy that in itself wasn't wrong. Being aggressive isn't wrong, but if you don't manage those relationships in a strategic way where you're thinking long-term on core critical strategic stuff, that could come back to bite you in the butt. And that's a classic example of where it did bite IBM in the butt. Um, so, you know, the people that made those decisions probably retired millionaires because for a while there they probably did cut costs and widen margins and improve asset turnover rate but a few years later after those people retired IBM management was uh, left to uh, pick up the pieces of that sourcing decision here's another classic example if you asked uh, in general if you were interviewing with someone and sometimes it's very important that you ask good questions to impress the person that's interviewing you one of the questions I would ask is uh, so what would you say is your company's core competency? Be careful when you ask an interviewer a question because they could flip that back and say, well, what do you mean by a core competency? And if they did that to me, I would say, well, when I ask you what your core competency is, what are you really, really, really good at so that people come to you for it? What are you good at? It gives you a competitive advantage in the marketplace. What do you invest your resources in so that you get better at it? So then you ask the person that's interviewing you that question and maybe they flip it back again and say, well, what do you think our core competency is? I would say that in general, most of the companies that recruit from the ISM program design and build things. They're manufacturing companies. For a long time, I would have thought that the core competency of any manufacturing company on the planet is designing and building stuff. So if you ask that question, I would expect the manager to say our core competency is designing and building stuff better, faster, and cheaper than anyone else in the world, okay? So Boeing is a manufacturing company that designs and builds commercial jetliners. And I would think that designing and building commercial jetliners is its core competency or needs to be. Boeing, likewise, started competing against a company called Airbus several decades ago, and Boeing was unable to competitively price its products so people would buy them in a way that left them with lots of money left over. One of the reasons for that is because Airbus is partly owned by the governments of different countries in Europe, and Airbus, this European conglomerate that designs and builds commercial jetliners, gets tax subsidies and uh, tax breaks from the governments of different countries because they have partial ownership in them. The only people that own Boeing are the shareholders. The American government isn't going to help Boeing for the sake of helping Boeing uh, for the sake of being more competitive against Airbus. Our government's response to Boeing was, well, figure it out. That's unfortunate for you, but do things better, faster, and cheaper. And that's exactly what Boeing did. Boeing started outsourcing all the commodities that go into a commercial jetliner. This is stuff that Boeing used to design and build itself. Boeing used to build the brackets, the fasteners, the nuts and bolts, the widgets that go into a commercial jetliner. Then it realized we could outsource this stuff to people that can do it better, faster, and cheaper than we can ourselves. And then when we do that, not only do we do that, but then we free up resources internally to focus on what needs to be our core competency, which is designing and building commercial jetliners. 
Well, that wasn't enough for Boeing, so they decided that they were going to outsource almost everything that goes into a commercial jetliner. And I ask my students this, what do you think is the most important part of an airplane or a commercial jetliner where if you protect the design secrets on this part of the plane, you'll have no problems whatsoever with outsourcing everything else. And usually my students will say, well, what about the black box? And I'm like, I don't even know what that is, but I'll bet you there's 50 suppliers out there that can design and build a black box. So if the plane crashes, they can figure out what happened. Then my students will say, well, what about the engine, that big ass engine in a commercial jetliner? And I will say, well, you know, it's kind of core and strategic, but at the same time, have jet engines really changed the last 100 years? Yeah, they're more powerful, they're faster, they last longer, they're easier to maintain. They're more fuel efficient, they're quieter, but they're still basically the same thing, right? And jet engines, don't you have like five, 10 companies out there like GE and Pratt & Whitney and Rolls-Royce that can design and build jet engines? So I'm like, is that really uh, core and strategic as we might think it is? And I would say that those things are commodities and not surprisingly, Boeing outsources all of that stuff. Uh, Rolls-Royce in Indianapolis, Indiana, employs a ton of WMU ISM graduates and they design and build jet engines for customers like Boeing and Airbus. So what's Boeing's competitive advantage? They can design and build, drum roll, wings. Yeah, the wings on an airplane. Apparently that stuff's really important and you have to be really good at it and it's really hard to do and takes decades if not centuries of practice. So what Boeing did is they started outsourcing everything that goes into the wing of a commercial jetliner. And people in the Seattle, Washington area we're very, very concerned because wait a second, you're Boeing and you employ lots of people with great paying jobs. You're outsourcing something that's core and critical and strategic to your product. Should we be concerned? Is this going to bury you? And is your own greed to widen margins and increase asset turnover rate going to destroy Boeing? And Boeing assured everyone, this was the response. We're going to outsource almost everything that goes into a wing, but we're going to outsource it to so many different suppliers that the chances of them sitting down together is almost next to none. And that's how they were, they were gonna protect the design secrets of designing and building the wings of a commercial jetliner. Then people started to figure out, wait a second, you're outsourcing a lot of this stuff to Japanese suppliers, uh, some of which are owned by Mitsubishi and or do enormous amounts of business with Mitsubishi. What's the big deal with Mitsubishi? Mitsubishi's trying to design and build airplanes. So wait a second, you're outsourcing all of this stuff to suppliers that do business and or are partly owned by someone that could be a competitive threat to you. Now it's not making sense, right? But Boeing assured everyone, don't worry about it. You understand, just because they can get in a room together and talk about, oh, we're making this for Boeing, we're making this for Boeing, we're making this for Boeing, Boeing's still putting a lot of the pieces together. And when Boeing has them make parts for them, they're giving them the bare minimum information they need so they don't understand how it's all interconnected. I will admit, based on what I've read and seen, uh, Mitsubishi is really struggling with designing and building commercial jetliners. The good news is every time they do it and put it up in the sky, it crashes. They're unmanned, uh, no one's dying, no one's getting hurt, but it's incredibly complicated. So the point I was trying to make is there's nothing wrong with an aggressive, aggressive outsourcing strategy to the point where you outsource almost everything, as long as you do so in a strategic way that examines what will be the long-term implications of this sourcing strategy. I talked about IBM outsourcing core critical strategic stuff. They weren't thinking about the strategic long-term implications of their decisions. Boeing was. So I would argue that it worked out for Boeing. It didn't work out for IBM on the PC side of the business. And not surprisingly, uh, IBM right now probably makes almost all of its money on super mainframe uh, computer type systems to like the Department of Defense and a lot of consulting and services. Uh, probably not on what is in essence a commodity like a uh, PC. Okay. The other thing I want to say is when I first started teaching in the ISM program, I would have argued that the vast majority of the companies would have said that their core competency thing they got to be really, really, really good at is designing and building stuff. I still think that's the case. You're not gonna interview a General Motors or Ford or Chrysler or John Deere uh, or Harley Davidson or Honda and hear them say that we don't have to be good at that stuff. But I will say this, companies are getting really aggressive with their outsourcing strategies. They're outsourcing almost all of their material needs, their direct material needs, their commodities, 
core critical strategic stuff. And the end result is that they're all outsourcing this stuff to some of the same suppliers where I look at it now and I think supply chain management is their core competency. And you can have multiple core competencies. You can say, my core competency is designing and building stuff. And I'm using supply chain management as a core competency also to help me design and build stuff better, better, faster, and cheaper. So I still think designing and building stuff is manufacturing's core competency but through very, very aggressive outsourcing strategies and partnerships and strategic alliances with suppliers, they're using supply chain management as another core competency to build on their core competencies of designing and building stuff. If you look at the auto industry, it's gotten to the point where they're teaming up with suppliers on technology. If you look at electric vehicles and electric vehicle batteries and autonomous vehicles, vehicles that will drive themselves, you have the OEMs, the automotive OEMs like Toyota, Ford, Chrysler, GM, teaming up with suppliers that before we've never heard of, that were small, that were startups, and working with them and building them up and sometimes buying them outright or establishing joint ventures or joint ownership, bare minimum saying, I want joint ownership of your design and manufacturing capabilities and what you get in return is our business and you're going to go from doing no business a year to maybe billions down the road if this thing actually transforms the industry where we see a technological leap of which we haven't seen in over 100 years. We've been going drive it yourself, internal combustion engine, and maybe in 5 to 10 years we're looking at something where we don't use fossil fuels and uh, we're not driving our vehicles ourselves anymore. So I think uh, what you're majoring in has in itself become a core competency. So to kind of wrap it up, uh, the companies of the future, what might they look like? Some people like Michael Porter of the Harvard Business School have said, what we might see is companies literally outsource everything to the point where they don't really do anything themselves. And that is their core competency because they're so good at not doing anything themselves. So here's an example, Michael Porter, this Harvard Business School professor, in the 70s, 80s, and 90s would visit big, fat American companies that were highly vertically integrated. And he would say, look, you're a manufacturing company. Focus on designing and building stuff. Outsource everything else. In other words, why did you finance yourself? Couldn't you hire Merrill Lynch or Fidelity or TIA, CREF, or uh, Charles Schwab or anyone else out there that does this for a living and can do it better, faster, and cheaper than you can yourself? Hey, General Motors, you're actually paying people with benefits over 100K a year to manage finances for you. And you're not that great at it because that's not your core competency. So this Michael Porter guy from the Harvard Business School went into American companies and said, you're big and fat, you're too highly vertically integrated, you're spreading your resources out too thinly, and the end game is you suck at a bunch of different things, you're not great at any one single thing. In other words, you don't have a core competency and everyone needs a core competency. So he told them, outsource finance, outsource accounting, Hire a big four accounting firm. That's what they do for a living. They can do it better than you can. Human resources management, why do you have HR managers? Go hire an employment agency to do all that stuff for you. Screen people, hire people, interview people, do drug tests for people. Why do you have your resources dedicated to that? And this Porter guy came back and said, you know, what about marketing, logistics, operations, all this stuff? In other words, couldn't you basically outsource every entire functional area within your company. So this Porter guy is saying the leanest and meanest companies that will most competitively price their products and have the widest margins and the highest asset turnover rate where they can do more with less will be the companies that really don't do much themselves. So outsource, finance, human resources management, accounting, maybe marketing, logistics. Couldn't you outsource manufacturing even though you're a manufacturing company? Well, that's what a lot of companies do in manufacturing. Uh, the toy industry, name one major toy manufacturer that actually does manufacturing themselves. They subcontract that to companies that just make stuff in the toy industry. That's their core competency. Uh, you look at circuit boards that go into almost anything that has technology. None of the companies actually design and build those things themselves. They outsource that to companies that do that for a living, like uh, Jable Circuits or... Uh, Flextronics. So this Porter guy is basically, what he's trying to say is you could outsource everything, but if you do it strategically, you could actually get a competitive advantage from that. So will, will we ever see that? Well, look at the auto industry. They outsource everything to all of the same suppliers. 
on the high tech technology core stuff, you see them team up with certain suppliers. So Ford will team up with this little supplier. GM will team up with this little supplier on core critical stuff. But in essence, they're all outsourcing everything, and the end game is who manages their who manages their suppliers the best. So you're majoring in purchasing operations and logistics management. Will companies actually outsource logistics, inbound, outbound, warehousing, distribution? Yes, they already are. Small to medium-sized companies have been doing it for decades because they couldn't afford to do it themselves, so they hired these three PLs and four PLs to do it for them. Now the Fortune 500 types are outsourcing logistics. Think about that. You're majoring in something that companies are outsourcing. Is that good or bad? Well, there's still logistics jobs at Whirlpool and GM, but Whirlpool and GM aren't actually moving the things around themselves. They're paying someone else to do it for them. So the jobs and logistics at Whirlpool and GM are managing those relationships and contracts and suppliers, which is not an easy job that requires strategic skill sets because these are like $300 million contracts. So they pay a premium for what you're majoring in, even though technically they're not sitting around with, with dispatch and on a telephone moving trucks around in and out. Uh, GM, Ford, Chrysler, John Deere, IBM, Harley, Honda, do you really think they got buyers buying office supplies, staplers, uh, toilet paper? They've outsourced all of that indirect stuff. So the point I'm trying to make is there are still purchasing jobs at those companies. They're very strategic in nature. Those companies are outsourcing core critical things and some commodities in terms of direct material purchases. Those are serious jobs and those jobs are still there. But don't get discouraged that companies are outsourcing parts of what you're majoring in because if they're outsourcing logistics to JB Hunt, guess what? JB Hunt does all of the logistics for Whirlpool. Who do they hire? WMU ISM grads. So there are companies out there where their core competency is specifically in what you're majoring in. Manufacturing subcontractors like JBO, their core competency is what you're majoring in because you're majoring in purchasing operations and logistics management. If uh, you get a job offer from uh, Penske or Federal Express or UPS or JB Hunt, their core competency is in logistics. You're majoring in that. Likewise, there are companies out there where all they do is buy indirect stuff. When I say indirect stuff, they buy stuff for companies that don't go directly into the products that they make and build, but they spend a lot of money on advertising, toilet paper, snow plow services, maintenance, uh, gloves, repair items, uh, spare tooling, lubricants for the machines. There are companies out there that manage that spend for companies so that manufacturing companies can focus on the bigger, more important part of their total spend, which is direct material purchases. Okay, so hopefully all of that makes sense to you. I just wanted you to understand that uh, you're going into an economy where outsourcing is huge. When I worked at GM and we were highly vertically integrated, we did everything ourselves. My job was clerical. It was red tape. It was paperwork. It was documentation. There was nothing strategic about it because we did everything ourselves from beginning to end. I made sure that the right stuff was at the right place at the right time in the right quantities. I didn't need a college degree for that. Uh, so wrapping it up, uh, these highly vertically integrated companies of the past uh, don't really exist anymore. So now the question becomes, what if you outsource everything, you get really good at it, to the point where your margins are ridiculous, your asset turnover rate is through the roof, you make gigantic amounts of money, and you don't know what to do with it because you're just that profitable. They might think that's crazy talk. It's happening. Uh, look at what Amazon's doing. Amazon is making a lot of money, is profitable, sits on large amounts of money, its market cap is over a trillion dollars. That means when you take the value of its stock and you add it all up across all shareholders, it's worth some one point something trillion dollars. Amazon has basically said, we're going to now deliver some of our own stuff to our own customers. So you can make the argument that they're making so much money and they're getting so good at what they do that they're going from an aggressive outsourcing strategy where they would have someone else do all of their delivery services for them to now they're saying, well, let's dabble with this. Is Amazon's goal to do all of its own delivery is its goal to put UPS and Federal Express out of business. Uh, our Department of Justice and Federal Trade Commission is probably watching that one to make sure that they don't, but haven't they already taken huge amounts of business away 
from Federal Express and UPS by becoming more vertically integrated. Some people are looking at Apple and saying, Apple, you're sitting on two, three hundred billion in cash. Your margins are ridiculous. Your asset turnover rate is through the roof. Your ROI is phenomenal. Your stock is shooting through the roof, but you're sitting on this cash. What are you going to do with that cash? Uh, there are rumors that one of the things Apple wants to do is not only identify the next $1 trillion industry and dominate it, but also to maybe move away from outsourcing everything to maybe becoming a little more vertically integrated. And there might be advantages to that. If you can take your cash and invest it in doing something yourself and you think you can do it better, faster, and cheaper than someone else can, that might be a good investment. So lately, uh, Apple has said, we subcontract almost all of our manufacturing. When it comes to our products, we really don't build almost all of our products, someone else does. And we just kind of just manage that process and we manage it very well and we've gotten away with it. That's why we got wide margins and incredible asset turnover rate. Apple is rumored to potentially be building its own manufacturing facilities in the near future, bring them back to the United States, in essence, to reduce risk, have more control, but then also, because they think they might be able to build things better, faster, and cheaper than, th than to the people that they're subcontracting to and managing in places like China and Southeast Asia. So watch out, we, in the next 10 to 20 to 50 to 100 years, might see a scope full circle. Over 100 years ago, companies were highly vertically integrated. Then they started outsourcing everything so that they could do things better, faster, and cheaper, wide margins and improve asset turnover rate. Maybe they get so good at outsourcing everything and start to sit on gigantic amounts of cash that they start to invest in themselves again and do more things themselves and become more vertically integrated. Will they ever be completely vertically integrated where they do everything themselves from beginning to end? Probably not, but maybe there's a happy medium there and balance. And I think some companies like Amazon and Apple are trying to uh, discover that balance and maybe the old dinosaurs of the past like GM and Harley and uh, even Toyota, Honda, IBM and Boeing will likewise uh, shift their store sourcing strategy back to, well, let's do some of this ourselves again because when we outsourced it, we saw some of the consequences of that. It wasn't worth it. So we'll become a little more vertically integrated again. Okay, that's kind of a wrap on sourcing strategy. We had parts one, two, and this was three. And hopefully you see how complicated it is and why you need a college degree in this stuff and tons of work experience. Because if you don't, you're going to make some bad decisions that will really hurt your company. Okay, I will talk to you soon. Bye.